one of the things I really love about being in this city is how accessible it is. It's just a marvelous place to stroll around freely and be content with what you'll find because so much of it is just, what can I say, pleasant. I just stumbled into a beautiful little park with the fountain that you see and behind it, lo and behold, the gorgeous National Theater named in honor of the poet, novelist, and playwright Ivan Vasov, considered the patriarch of Bulgarian literature and during his lifetime lived just around the corner. This park and numerous others like it in the city are not just parks in the way we normally think of them. They're more like outdoor living rooms. They're actual public gathering places, both during the day and in the nighttime. I was talking to a, a local yesterday, a recent law school grad, who was telling me that if I were to come to this park after dark almost any night during spring, summer, and fall, I would find people lining the benches, much as they are now, but having brought their wine or their beer, just enjoying evening conversation. And after walking the heart of the city for the last couple of days now and getting a sense of the rhythm of daily life here, I can absolutely understand why. This particular park is sort of between the old lower slung traditional charming European city and to the south of it the more business side of the city I would say with some low-rise and high-rise buildings off in the distance behind the, the palace but this is a reminder of what a great place this is to visit as a traveler not to mention probably to live as an expat. It's a large city, but very accessible, very walkable, and all of the things that are really appealing or in a relatively short proximity. So it's one of those kinds of places that if you're a traveler, you just appreciate coming to. Although more than 90% of Bulgarians are Orthodox, most are only nominally religious. That may be why for many years here, even during World War II with the country under pressure from Hitler, it wasn't completely all in while ostensibly on the side of the Nazis. Bulgaria was still a constitutional monarchy and the then king famously slow walked Hitler's orders to ship Bulgarian Jews off to concentration camps. I mention this because from where I'm walking, I can turn in almost any direction and see great houses of worship from no fewer than four religious traditions. This is something that residents of Sofia, as well as Bulgarians generally, are proud of. In fact, this part of the city is often called the Square of Tolerance. As I think I mentioned in a previous video from Bulgaria, the nation consists of about 10% Muslim, but not so many 
live in the Sofia area, there's only this one mosque, and yet it is, uh, on special occasions at least, not sufficient to hold the number of congregants. And as a result, I don't know if you noticed, but there are prayer rugs outside this mosque in the little plaza in front of it. Something Sofia has long been known for is its mineral hot springs. In fact, that's the primary reason why the Romans and the Thracians before them chose to inhabit Sertica. From those springs came bathhouses. I'm just outside the last of the city's great public bathhouses, a beautiful Neo-Byzantine building built in the first decade of the 20th century. You can go inside and take a look around, but you can't bathe here. It's now a regional museum. But as with bathhouses elsewhere in the area, this was a popular meeting place back in the day when people gathered, especially on weekends, to bathe and to socialize. There are said to be at least 40 such springs beneath this city. And there are several places, like the one I'm walking up to, where you can come anytime and fill up a bottle with water that's precisely 37 degrees Celsius or 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit from its source. <laughs> I'm going to move around and take my turn and uh, test out this water. Here goes. Oh yeah. Yes. That's very good. In fact, uh, will be great on a cold winter day. All you'd have to do is, I guess, bring a tea bag, dip it in a cup, and you're ready to go. It's no coincidence that this uh, beautiful former bathhouse is located precisely where it is. I know you're saying, well, of course, because there's a hot water spring beneath it, and that's true. But originally, this was a, a Turkish hammam a Turkish bathhouse during Ottoman days. And hence the mosque that you just saw is to one side of this beautiful fountain in this plaza that is built over that hammam. I've come to a rather noisy plaza in order to show you the seat of Bulgaria's government. That imposing Stalinist style building you see behind me was built in 1955 and for many years served as the headquarters of Bulgaria's Communist Party before the country turned to democracy after the fall of the Soviet Union. Right now it's temporarily being used as Bulgaria's parliament building, while the regular House of Parliament is undergoing major renovation. And practicalities aside, not all Bulgarians are happy about the symbolism in that. The parliament building or temporary parliament building is flanked on either side by the Council of Deputies building, which is to my immediate right, and across the street, the huge building where much of the executive branch holds sport, the offices of the president. Even though, to be clear, Bulgaria's system as the prime minister, as the person with the most power. I've come downstairs in the Council of Deputies complex to show you something most unusual. I'm in the basement level of this complex, which can be entered from the main plaza. No questions asked. Anyone's free to come down here. But I'm also walking on the original stones of the ancient Sertica. Just look at this. It's literally a Roman ruin in a basement level. 
is directly under most of the top bureaucrats of the government of Bulgaria. You may have noticed up on the, the main plaza that these giant, I guess, maybe fiberglass windows, openings to allow light in down below. Well, this is what's down below those skylights. It's the ruins, more ruins, of the ancient Serdica, both beneath the building itself and extending out into the Grand Government Plaza that uh, I was just on. So even though I'm inside a, a government ministry, where I'm walking precisely right now is down what was the main street going east to west in Serdica. And I'm approaching what was the east gate of the city, right here off a very sort of governmental looking hallway. Pretty amazing. Well, I've come across to the other side of the plaza because there's something else I want to show you, most unusual, on the side of the plaza that houses the offices of the president. Yes, they do have a changing of the guard here, once per hour on the hour, I'm told. This is one of the most unlikely locales for a place of antiquity you'd ever expect to find. The ancient building you see here is the Church of St. George dating to the fourth century. And as you can see, it's almost completely hidden, surrounded in a box canyon of 20th century buildings, including the presidential uh, suites uh, to my left in the building where his offices are and a hotel and apartment complex both behind it and to the other side of it. The buildings you see around this ancient site were built in the communist era when it would have been a bridge too far to level the ancient church. So the regime did the next best thing. It hit it. This church, sometimes referred to as the Rotunda Church, was built as a Roman bathhouse originally and dates to the 3rd century CE. You can see the bathhouse ruins from in front of it. It became a church in the 4th century during the time of Constantine the Great when he himself he lived here. But its claim to fame are the several layers of mosaics discovered on the walls inside, the first from the 10th century and others from the 12th, 13th, and 14th centuries. Each was painted over the other, which turned out to be a blessing in disguise because the Newer ones serve to protect the older layers from the degradations of time. This church is one of the things that tourist brochures and guidebooks suggest that you visit, that you see in Sofia. And yet it is tucked away in such a way that you'd have to look for it to find it. Walked around to the side of the church, inside the walls, I'm not absolutely sure I'm supposed to be here. I'm looking for a way to get to the former Roman baths behind the apse of the church and it appears that I've succeeded. There's no one else in this ruin in the baths at the moment. Well, there is one person now coming up behind me. What I'm walking on are actually what's left of the baths that were constructed here by the Romans in the third century. And I think I've mentioned that both uh, Constantine and uh, at least two other Roman emperors made somewhat regular visits to Sophia or Sertica, it was as it was known then. And they came here for the obvious reason. It was a, uh, a getaway for them, a place for them to indulge in uh, the warm mineral waters of the springs of the ancient city and 
this particular Roman bath, I'm told, uh, was designated for special guests of the emperor. So the open air cavities that I'm walking around in right now were once inside some pretty impressive structures befitting friends of an emperor. The city is so well connected with its metro system, buses and trolleys, that it's just easy to get around here. I happen to be staying near the train station, which is two subway stops from the center of the city. And it, it's a nice leafy village-like neighborhood. I couldn't be happier with it. 10 minutes, 12 minutes max. I can be in downtown Sofia. The only thing about my apartment that I'll mention is something that I've never experienced before. That is, I'm sleeping in a room that is overseen by a larger than life fiberglass mold of a statue of Augustus Caesar. And that, for me, is a first. <laughs>